Today we're looking at practice test 5, the math no calculator section, only hard of algebra questions, and there are 8 of them. Number 1. Which of the following is an equation of line L in the xy plane to the left? Well, for choice A here, the line x equals 1 is going to be a vertical line, like this. That's not what we're looking for. Choice B, y is equal to 1, is going to be a horizontal line. Also not what we're looking here for here. And choice C, y is equal to x, starts here at the origin. And it's very similar to this line, but it's a little bit off. The reason we need this plus 1 is because the y-intercept is here at 1. And then the slope is 1, so we go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. That's our line. Number 7. Jackie has two summer jobs. She works as a tutor, which pays $12 per hour. And she works as a lifeguard, which pays nine fifty per hour. She can work no more than 20 hours per week, but she wants to earn at least $220 per week. Which of the following systems of inequalities represents this situation in terms of x and y, where x is the number of hours she tutors and y is the number of hours she works as a lifeguard? Well, if she makes $12 per hour for tutoring, which we're supposed to use x for, and nine fifty per hour for the lifeguarding, which we use y, together she wants to earn at least $220 per week. So it could be greater than but at the very least. That's why we have a greater than or equal to sign, and we're going to use that $220. On the other hand, the number of hours she works per week is going to be x plus y, and it's supposed to be no more than 20. So 20 at the largest possible, but also could be less than. We see choice C has the correct facing inequalities. Number 8. In air, the speed of sound s in meters per second is a linear function of the air temperature t in degrees Celsius and is given by s of t equals 0 0.6 t plus 331.4. Which of the following statements is the best interpretation of the number 331.4 in this context? If we consider this equation as if it was a y is equal to mx plus b equation, the 331.4 is like our B value, which means it's the y-intercept or the starting value for word problems. In this case, we don't really have a starting value because we're plugging in a temperature. So plugging in different temperatures will give you different speeds of sounds. However, if we plug in a zero for the temperature, then that cancels out this mx term, and that's like a starting point. That's why A is the correct answer. Number 13. At a restaurant, n cups of tea are made by adding tea tea bags to hot water. If t is equal to n plus 2, how many additional tea bags are needed to make each additional cup of tea? We can solve this problem by making a table. And as we plug in different values for n, we can see how many tea bags are needed, which is the variable t. So first off, if we plug in 1 here for n, to get t, we'll take 1 plus 2, which is 3. If we plug in a 2, it becomes 2 plus 2, which is 4, and 3 plus 2, which is 5. So for each additional cup of tea, we need one additional tea bag. The confusing part is that original plus 2, which is a starting value more than an additional tea bag needed per cup of tea. Number 15. Alan drives an average of 100 miles each week. His car can travel an average of 25 miles per gallon of gasoline. Alan would like to reduce his weekly expenditure on gasoline by $5. Assuming gasoline costs $4 per gallon, which equation can Alan use to determine how many fewer average miles M he should drive each week? So let's break down how we created this equation. It tells us in the problem that it costs $4 per one gallon and that from one gallon we average 25 miles. So to figure out how many fewer average miles, m, 
that will reduce our cost by $5. We want to know how many miles do we have to drive for it to cost $5. And then this is what we would subtract from 100, this value of m. But we don't have to solve the entire problem, we just have to set up the equation. And the one thing to notice here is that one gallon and one gallon cross out. So we're left with 4 over 25 m is equal to 5. Number 16. Maria plans to rent a boat. The boat rental costs $60 per hour, and she will also have to pay for a water safety course that costs $10. Maria wants to spend no more than $280 for the rental and the course. If the boat rental is available only for a whole number of hours, what is the maximum number of hours for which Maria can rent the boat? Writing this situation as a linear equation would give us y is equal to $60 per hour plus a fixed cost of $10. However, we're not writing this as a linear equation because Maria wants to spend no more than $280, which means that we're going to erase this y is equal to, and instead we're going to set up an inequality less than or equal to for 280 which means that no matter what we plug in for x, this fixed cost will be less than or equal to $280. So, we can only use whole numbers. Let's create a table. If we rent this boat for one hour, we would take 60 times 1 plus 10 and get $70. Still works. That's less than 280. If we rent it for two hours, we would get 130. For three hours, 190. For four hours, 250. And for five hours, 310. So five hours exceeds our budget, but four hours is still less than it. So the correct answer to this problem would be four hours. Number 17. 2 times the quantity p plus 1 plus 8 times the quantity p minus 1 is equal to 5p. What value of p is the solution of the equation above? The first thing we can do is distribute the 2 and the 8 for these sets of parentheses. This gives us 2p plus 2 plus 8p minus 8 is equal to 5p. The next step is to combine the like terms. 2p plus 8p is equal to 10p and 2 minus 8 gives us negative 6. I'm going to add all the numbers to the right side of the equation and subtract all the p's to the left side. Oftentimes what happens is students will get to this step to cancel out their 5p and they will have 5p minus 6 and they don't know where to go from there. Remember there's actually a 0 on that side of the equation. So when we add 6 to both sides we get that 5p is equal to 6 and when we divide both sides by 5 our final answer is six-fifths. Number 18. One-half times the quantity 2x plus y is equal to 21 halves, and y is equal to 2x. The system of equations above has solution x, y. What is the value of x? Because this second equation has a coefficient of 1 in front of the y, we can use substitution quite easily. We're going to replace the y in the first equation with what it's equal to in the second equation. This gives us the equation 1 half times the quantity 2x plus 2x is equal to 21 divided by 2. I'm noticing that both sides are being divided by 2. I could multiply by 2 on both sides and cancel that out. I'm left with on the left side 4x and on the right side 21. When I divide both sides by 4, my final answer is 21 over 4.